Hello, everyone. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us on the Live Unreal with Glover You podcast, where every week, Jeff Glover will dive deep into the questions that you are asking. He understands the challenges you are facing on a day-to-day basis because he still works every day on the front lines of real estate, with him and his team closing over 1,000 homes per year. In today's episode, Jeff will continue the 28 habits and developing the millionaire mindset with habits number 8 through 28. You will learn from Jeff the mindset and habits of his successful leader and why these leaders are exceptional. Now let's hear from Jeff Glover. Number eight, millionaire real, millionaire real estate leaders in the business today, they are protective of the company they keep. They are very protective of the company they, feed, they keep. You've heard this before. You are an average of the five people you most associate yourself with. So mastermind with other leaders who are doing, not have done. Okay. Get around people who are doing it right now not people who have done it at some point in time. I wanna be around people who are succeeding right now. Spend time with your most productive people, not your least productive. Have an extra layer of leadership in place so you have more time with your top 20%. What do most leaders do in the real estate industry? They spend all their time with their bottom 20, but with their bottom 80%. Well, yeah, but my top 20% are so busy. Those are the people that you need to be spending your time with. Okay, Those those are your greatest assets. Those are your best voices. Those are your best examples. Why are you spending all your time with your bottom 80% when you should be spending it with your top 20? Well, how do you do that? Add a layer of leadership if you have to. Get somebody else to help you with that group. And if you're not at a point where you can hire someone to help you with that group, well, then you have to be better at your own time management. Next, number nine, I wrote down traits, habits, mindset of a millionaire real estate leader. They have a strong, unwavering focus in the industry. They have a strong, unwavering focus, which means they do not get swept up in get-rich-quick schemes, and they understand the value of sticking to one thing time over time. They don't get easily swayed by shiny objects, and they understand that the road always isn't the most exciting one. This road, by the way, okay, the boring and mundane, but usually ends up being the most profitable one. Number 10, they put zero stock in the thoughts and opinions of others. Now, this one's a little controversial, right? Because, well, okay, we're not saying you're putting zero stock in, in people that you look up to or people that you need advice from. I'm talking about people that are doing less than you or not doing anything at all. Rather than chasing, listen to me very clearly on this, rather than chasing validation or praise from the outside, they keep their head down and work. If they get some form of recognition, it's more or less seen as an afterthought or a bonus. Okay, and it's not the driving force behind why they're doing it. I'll repeat that. They put zero stock in the thoughts or opinions of others, and rather than chasing validation or praise from the outside, they keep their head down and work. If they get some form of recognition, it's more or less like a bonus. Oh, that's an afterthought, sure. But it's not the driving force behind why they're doing what they're doing. Number 11, they value advice from those that have not only gone, but are still currently doing. This is what drives me crazy about all these experts in the field today, all these coaches in the field today. Half of them have never sold real estate. The other half are, 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 are leaders of real estate, aren't on the ground right now, and a certain percentage of them aren't even in the business anymore. So why would I take advice from somebody that's not doing right now? I don't understand it. Why would you take advice from someone that did something 10 years ago? What, what happened 10 years ago doesn't work today. Number 12. They have a strong why and vision outside of just themselves. They understand the big picture, how they fit into it, and work tirelessly towards creating something that changes lives, rather than just changing their own life. Their vision is bigger than themselves, okay? Think about your own personal mission. What is your company mission? What is your state, what is your statement to the community? Okay, you heard me talk about in session one, our mission statement is living unreal experience to deliver one. I mean, we are big on living unreal. That's all we do. How can we help our associates live unreal lives while they're here and outside of work, while they're at home with their families? What is your personal mission? What is your mission statement? Do your people know what your personal mission is? Do your people know what your mission statement is? I can tell you firsthand, I struggle with that and I did not do a good job of it. I actually thought the only reason why people came to work for me was because they wanted to learn how to make a bunch of money. And so my mission was, let's just help everyone make a bunch of money. Well, as time went on, I learned that it's more, it's more than just money. It's more than just income. All right, so what is your mission? What is your why and your vision outside of just yourself and your people? Number 13, I wrote down, 
millionaire real estate leaders know when to stop and know when to say no to things that take them off their path. Okay, it goes back to your discipline with time, which we're gonna spend an entire future session on. Next, number 14. Millionaire real estate leaders rarely know the latest news or gossip going on. They rarely know what's happening, you know, who's, who's dating who, better yet, they don't care. These type of people often seem cold or disinterested in the juicy gossip because they understand that every, watch, listen to this. Every minute they spend focusing on something that has nothing to do with them distracts them from their ultimate mission. So why are we talking about it? Furthermore, this group spends more time talking about ideas. The millionaire real estate leaders are talking about ideas and concepts and rarely spend time talking about people. All right. They're normally the last to know. Now, by the way, there is value in your organization having people who are your eyes and ears. Okay, but you just have to train them to sift through. They have to have a little bit of a filter to know what is important to share with you and what is not. Well, because if they shared everything with you, they'd be in your office every day sharing with you all the juicy gossip. No, no, no. If it's going to move the business forward or it's going to move the business backward, I need to know. Other than that, it doesn't matter. All right, so now here's the thing. In addition to them sharing with you information that's going to move the business forward or backwards, you also need to train them on how to respond when people are are gossiping or being dramatic or being negative, right? You can't just say, yeah, you're, you're going to be my eyes and ears. So give me, give me all the juicy stuff. No, they need to put an end to it. They need to put a stop to it. Right. Right. They, 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 they can't perpetuate that type of language. Next number 15 thoughts of a real estate leadership millionaire. They believe that no one succeeds alone and that the lattice effect is real. This is actually straight from uh, quantum leap, which is a program that Gary Keller developed. They believe that no one succeeds alone and the lattice effect is real, which means you, we all have wealth determiners and wealth determinants. That's probably not even a word, but it makes sense. Meaning we all have someone that we're determining wealth for, and we all have someone that is determining wealth for us. Okay. Think about it. You're a leader in the industry. Who are you determining wealth for? Now, if you're an independent, I, I've always had concern for those that are independent brokers. Okay, because generally speaking, you don't have anyone that you report to, A, and B, you don't have anyone that's earning income off of your success. Well, yeah, but I get to keep all my commissions. You know, I, I don't have to pay any franchise fees. This isn't about being with a franchise or being not. Yes, that may be true. You may get to keep your commissions or not have to pay franchise fees, but then you need to seek out someone, whether it be a mentor or a coach or someone that will benefit from your success. Right now, you could say coaching. Okay, fine. There's tons of coaching programs out there. That is someone that will benefit from your success because there's a monthly fee and you'll continue to pay them as long as you're successful. But if you're a solo agent, you're an independent broker, you don't have someone that you're determining wealth for, then I suggest you go try to find someone that can. Well, why is that? Well, by the way, that's why I never understood. I've, I've never been a fan of. Now, of course, if there's agents on this, you're saying, well, yeah, but I love getting 100% of my commission. I've never been a fan of the 100% commission model. Now, don't get mad for those of you that own franchises that offer that model, which is many today. But the reason why I'm not a fan of that is because once you've made all you can make off of an agent, well, then what's the incentive to help them get any better? What's the incentive to help them grow bigger? Now, of course, you say, well, reputation and signs in the yard and so forth, but let's be honest. If that was the case, then why is all the training in the industry designed to help newbies get to 1 million, 2 million, 3 million production? Because in most organizations, that's where the company is making their money. Once an agent does 3, 4, 5 million, the company stops making money off of them. And I never understood that's not a benefit to real estate agents, by the way. You understand if you're an agent on this and you're bragging about your, your, your 90, 10 or your 100% split once you hurt, hit a certain level, keep in mind that that probably means that somebody isn't looking after you as closely to help you succeed. The lattice effect is real. We all have people that we determine wealth for and we all have people that determine wealth for us. Choose your, watch this, choose your wealth determiners wisely. Choose the people that you are determining wealth for wisely. Choose the people that determine wealth for you wisely. Number 16, millionaire real estate leaders understand how to present the time value of money. They understand how to present the time value of money to their people. Okay, I wrote down in our industry, this comes down to the split versus net conversation. They view net, not just what they get to keep in their pocket, but the time at the end of the day, because again, it goes back to understanding and valuing our greatest asset, which is time. 
When is the last time you explained to your associates that your goal is to not give them a better commission split? Your goal is to help them net more income. Your goal is to help them have more taxable income. I know this doesn't sound so great, but your goal is to help them have more money to pay Uncle Sam, right? Because the more money you make, the more money you're paying them. Your goal is to help them have more time with their family. It's not just about commission splits. People want a higher net income. People place a high value. Millionaire real estate agents place a high value on their time. If you can show me as a broker, owner, leader in the industry, how I can get more time back to go invest in real estate, to go spend more time with my family, then you are a broker I want to be in business with. They understand how to present the time value of money. It's the split versus net conversation. Uh, there's a couple, there's an article I did on this conversation. It's out there somewhere. Uh, you can probably Google it. If you just search Jeff Glover split versus net conversation, um, you'll find it. Anyways, number 17, they strive to never be the smartest or richest person in a room. They seek out being in business with people with a very large vision because they know that they'll never hit a ceiling so long as they're aligned with someone with a big vision. Well, how do you get that? Especially for you solo agents or, or, or independents. You have to go to events. You have to surround yourself with people that are thinking bigger, faster, better, so forth. Number 18, millionaire real estate leaders are extremely self-aware. They know their weaknesses. They're not practicing in their, and playing in their weaknesses. They're hiring out their weaknesses. They're playing in their strengths. They're very self-aware. Number 19, they have the capacity to stay focused on their goals despite all the distractions. Once they set a goal, they put blinders on and virtually nothing else matters besides achieving their goals or staying on track. Meaning they don't get distracted by shiny objects. There's no such thing as FOMO with millionaire leaders in this industry. There's no such thing as FOMO at all. Why is that? Because I know what I need to do and I'm focused on what I need to do. They possess a very intense level of concentration for the things that are most important to them, okay? Use weekends. If you, if, if you get too many distractions in your office, too many got a minute, too, too many people walking in, use weekends for stuff like this. Number 20, they understand, and I know we're getting short on time, so I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly. They understand how to separate feeling from fact and only give life to things that matter most to them in relation to their focus and goals. They understand how to separate feeling from fact and only give life to things that matter most to them in relationship to their focus and their goals. They understand that feelings are temporary and they come and go. This is, this is we receive information, we pick and choose what we decipher, what we listen to and what we take action on. Millionaire real estate leaders understand not everything requires a response. Okay. You can, you can analyze the situation and move on from it. If it doesn't require a response, we don't have to get caught up in the emotion of things. Oh, I love this one 21, especially for you leaders out there in the industry. Those who possess a millionaire leadership mindset, understand deferred payout and understand that they'll have to put in a lot of work up front to reap the rewards much later down the road. If only we could train our salespeople on this, okay? Millionaire real estate leaders aren't asking things like, what's in it for me? They're not watching the clock when they hit their 40 hours. They have the mentality of whatever it takes and however much it takes. And they don't let up or ask, what's in it for me? Because they understand that what they're working on and building will pay dividends in the end. Okay, we have to teach our salespeople this. There's plenty of books out there. John Maxwell is one of my favorites, 21 Laws of Leadership. He talks about that. 17 Laws of Indisputable Teamwork. It's a book that we're going through with our team right now. You can break that into chapters and turn it into a 17-week program if you want your team to be better team players. 17 Laws of Teamwork by John Maxwell. Number 22, millionaire real estate leaders understand how to withstand temporary pain or discomfort for long-term pleasure or payout, similar to the point before. They don't expect things to be easier every single day, and that doesn't affect our mindset. They understand that the work they do will go through seasons like anything else in life, and they'll persist through tough times to help reap the benefits down the line. They understand how to withstand temporary pain or discomfort for that long-term payout. Number 23, they have a very recognizable trait of mental toughness in all situations, regardless of the outcome. They have a very recognizable trait of mental toughness in all situations, regardless of the outcome. Challenges don't phase them. They aren't worried about who likes them, who doesn't. Definitely not worried about rejection, as you heard. They have likely overcome a lot of adversity to get to where they are today, and they understand that adversity has become an advantage to them. 
They have the ability to sit with a great deal of mental discomfort and not move away from it, thus making them mentally resilient when most people would give up. Mental toughness in all situations. Number 24, they understand that winning and recognition, gosh, I love this one, winning and recognition are part of the process on the way to the vision, not the vision itself. So many fly-by-night, not even fly-by-night, successful real estate agents are doing things and, and real estate brokers and leaders are doing things for recognition. Since when does, does, does Facebook monitor your bank account? Okay, who cares how many likes or comments and shares you get? That recognition isn't going to increase your bank account. Instead, their goals, millionaire real estate leaders, their goals go way beyond recognition, okay? But being recognized along the way is a natural byproduct of their intense focus and hard work. The recognition is just a byproduct. Number 25, we got a few more left. They possess an incredibly abundant mindset. And because of this, they're always willing to give and share. There's no such thing as, oh, this is my information. Can't share it with anyone. You know, oh, nope, nope. Got to keep this here, okay? They realize that the more they give, they, that life is full circle. It will show up later. So you don't know how, you don't know how much, you don't know the positive you make by sharing and giving and providing. It'll show up later and you don't ask for anything in return when you do. That's abundance. Number 26, they have a high level of personal accountability and can take responsibility in all situations for as much as they possibly can. Those who possess a millionaire mindset don't believe in making someone right or wrong. They're more focused on the truth and setting the course correct. And if it means taking more responsibility, they'll do it. The best of the best leaders today will take responsibility for as much as possible. They don't ever point a finger. Okay. I, I remember hearing early on, every time you point a finger, there's three fingers pointing back at you. They are responsible for everything in their life and in their situation. Number 27, last two. Those who possess a millionaire mindset have a great level of urgency with all that they do, and it shows up in how they take action. Okay, this is probably one that our staff, I drive them crazy because everything's, we have to take action on this now. We have, to, we have to focus on this now. We have to shift to this now. We have to get after this right now. Why are we waiting? Again, this comes back down to the greatest asset of millionaire leaders, their time and how they don't like to waste it. Therefore, because they don't know how much time they'll have on this physical earth, they believe in doing everything with urgency. We don't know how much time we have left. We don't know if we're going to have tomorrow. Everything we should do, we should do with a high level of urgency. Stop with this analysis paralysis crap. Finally, number 28, last but certainly not least, the wealthiest people in the real estate industry today all talk about either their mentors or their coaches. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, well, I don't really have a mentor, then go get a coach. I don't care who it is. It can be us. It can be anybody. Okay, this isn't about selling you our coaching. This is about everyone has to have a mentor or a coach. You go to any event, panel after panel after panel. Do you have a coach? Yep. Do you have a coach? Yep. Do you have a coach? Yep. Who's your mentor? Who's this? Who's that? Everyone has a mentor or a coach today. They understand that someone somewhere has come before them and has either led others on the path of greatness or are currently walking it themselves, which of course, you know, me and leading by example, I think is the number one form of leadership that a leader can provide to their people. So there you have it, 28 points on developing the real estate broker, owner, lead agent, millionaire mindset and habits. All right, now that we have laid the foundation, okay, now that, now what I want you to do, I want you to go back and look at your notes and I want you to circle one, okay, just, just spend 30 seconds, 60 seconds doing it right now. Go ahead, flip through your notes and I want you to circle with your pen, 7, 10, 15, 20, however many times, there's one in here that spoke to you. There's one point in here that you can make a change in your business, a change in your life, a change in your daily routine, a change in your activities that will put you on a stronger path to being a better leader in the industry. Now, of course, most of you that are watching this are already leading people. You already have a successful office or a successful brokerage or a successful team. But I promise you there's something in there that you can take action on, number one. Number two, the second thing I want you to do, I want you to take these notes and I want you to type them up. And during your next team meeting, during your next sales meeting, your next powwow, your next huddle, whatever you do with your team, I want you, just as I shared these points with you, I want you to share them with them. Now, you can add some, you can subtract some, I don't care what you do the notes, you can claim it to be your information, I don't care. But use this as material in your next training session. Now, you'll notice as we go through this program, I'll be talking a lot about 
use this with your agents, use this with your agents, because these are things that I'm doing. So guess what? This is stuff that I'm turning into content to share with our agents, and you should be doing the same thing. Thank you for taking your time to join Jeff today on the Live Unreal with Glover You podcast. To get started on having an unreal business, take the real estate self-assessment. After you complete the assessment, a member of Glover U will get on a call with you to create an action plan to improve your score. Go to www.gloveru.com self. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Search for Live Unreal with Glover U on iTunes, Podbean, or Spotify and subscribe today. Until next time, remember, every minute a millionaire leader spends focusing on something that has nothing to do with them distracts them from their ultimate mission.